So we're continuing our station exercise. Good. I got a dog in here I'm going to give a bone to. I don't know if you can get through. You want to get that? And he stayed down while I was in there. Very good. Good boy. Big reward there. So we've been practicing this a lot. So I just practice different things sitting down. I go, no. If he gets up, you say no. And he went back by himself. And I just do a little token, little no reward because he screwed up. So I got my, this is my real living room with all my clutter here. And I'll sit here and practice this. Going and sitting down, he stays there. Good, he gets a reward if he stays there. Uh, he's, he's good at that. Um, I can go behind him. I'm practicing this now. This was hard for him at first. Going into this hallway, closing the door, coming back. That was difficult for him to handle at first. Now he's got it. Good. Um, so anywhere in the house, he's pretty much cool with that, as you can see. Now we're gonna practice going outside. You wanna stand over there? Or maybe stand by the corner of the sofa over there so you can see everything. So I'm gonna go outside and knock on the door. If you're ever gonna do something that's difficult for him to handle, it's okay to remind him first what you want him to keep doing. Down. First, because it might be harder in your house, first you wanna stand there and just do this. The noise can trigger it, even though he sees you're standing right there. Good. And gradually work up to the bigger distractions. So he's used to that. Now I'm gonna go outside and disappear and come back. Very good. Now I'm gonna go outside and close the door, knock on the door, and ring the doorbell. Actually, I'm gonna open this, this, this um, um, hallway door so you can hear the doorbell, so he can hear the doorbell better. And knock, down. Oh, very good. Crazy doorbell. Good. If he does something hard, double reward. Give him an extra double reward if he does something that's really good to do. So now, I'm going to take him off the mat and I'm going to put him in his crate. So why don't you stand here? Good. Take him off his mat. He's got to stay there until we actually release him. Don't let him come off the mat until you release him. Okay. Sit. He sits. Open the crate door. Pat his chest and say, go. Goes in his crate. He's gonna turn around. When he turns around to meet me, another reward. Going in his crate is a great, um, a great experience for him. He loves to do it. Only good things have ever happened in there. He gets rewards for waiting in there until I tell him to come out. And he gets rewards for, um, for going in. So it's a good place. This is, this is a, um, in his mind, it's a good place. Um, this is a, a big giant size crate, but he's also been in a smaller crate too, his size. So this just is hap happens to be the size crate I have here, but we've had him in, in uh, different crates in different places so that he gets used to different situations. So you always wanna close the door when he's in there because if you don't close the door, it won't, um, won't be effective because you can't control his access in and out of the, the uh, boundary here, the entrance, and that's what this is all about. You're, it's one of the main things you wanna do to change the dog's perception of who you are, controlling his access in and out of his den. He looks at his crate now as his den. Since he's been here with me, every night he sleeps in his crate, gets rewards in there. If I'm gonna feed him any food other than out with training, he gets it in, in the crate and bones and any little chewies we've given him, everything happens in there. So he really associates the crate as a cool place to be now. Um, I take off his prong collar. We got him on a, a little, very small prong collar, which has really helped with, with his pulling. He's uh, desensitized to this now. I did this gradually. So um, he's used to it now. And of course, we always double up when we're on the prong collar. We double up as well on a choke chain. So just in case his prong collar ever comes out off on the street, you don't lose him. And the choke chain then comes into play. The choke chain's only for safety. So we uh, never use it for training because it would be dangerous and it would hurt his, his throat. So we only use it for safety and it's always hanging loose unless this comes off. So when I take it off, I just 
hang the, the prong collar there on, on the door and put the choke chain up here. When I'm going to take him out of the crate, I always go in with a reward. Every, in, every interaction with him in the crate and as, as many other places as possible is very positive. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go in with a little reward. Open the door. Good boy. See how I'm sticking my hand through the choke chain? And he's taking a reward and I just get that over his head. That's really easy. Choke chain's on. No. He needs to stay in there. If he tries to come out before you release him, no. Just give it a little token slam like that. And I hook up the prong collar to the, the leash. So that's already done. And then I just, I'm going to go in like this and put it around his his little head. I'm going to go in with the reward first. Good boy. And then reach in here. Hook him up to the prong collar. His tail's wagging away. He's very happy because this is association is always good with this prong collar. Me handling him around his neck with collars. It's always uh, associated with getting reward and getting now it's getting pets and everything. And he's just, as you know, when he's relaxed, he's a very sweet, loving dog. So he's that way with me now too because he knows I'm safe now. So see how he's waiting? If he waits like this, good, give him another reward. He's waiting at that boundary for your permission to come through. You stand up, pat your leg and say, okay, and he'll come out. I'm gonna do another little left circle, see how I walk into him. Close that door, make sure that door stays closed because he can only go in there with your permission. I'm gonna take him here, have him sit. Good boy. I always do this little having him wait at the doorway thing just to accentuate the fact that he is waiting for my permission to go through the doorway. Good, because once again, very important boundary, front door, very important. And then he walks through with me after I say, okay. Very slow, make sure he's not pulling you through. He's got to walk through on a loose leash like this. Don't let him pull you. And then, come on buddy. And then one last left turn to come back and close the front door and we'll go for a walk.